Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about NCCI, or the National Correct Coding Initiative. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I really love the things that I do, and I, I like sharing my knowledge, so I hope you'll take a second, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and at the end, if this video helps you, I hope you'll share it. So, let's get started, okay. Now, NCCI, the National Correct Coding Initiative. Uh, this video is going to discuss what it means <laughs> and give you some examples of, of what it's all about, okay? Um, I am going to be leaving a very valuable link down in the description box below, and I encourage you strongly when you have a free Saturday and you're not doing anything to please read this. It is like 40, what is it? How many pages is this? It's 48 pages. It's, it's not a bad read. It's actually very fascinating. And if you are a student, right, and you are just starting out and studying and things like that, I'm telling you, if you start to read this, you're going to be light years ahead once you start studying the, um, like the procedures, how to look at procedures and things like that. It's only going to benefit you to get this and to know this stuff. And even if you're not doing billing, okay, this isn't, this isn't about billing. This is about knowing how to properly apply the procedure codes because NCCI re is referring to procedure codes, to evaluation and management. That's what this is referring to, okay? So again, I hope you'll take a time and read it, okay? Um, because it's, it's really good. It's actually very fascinating. I was reading it this morning. <laughs> I was riveted, <laughs> but I am a nerd, so... <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Okay, so all silliness aside, uh, the CMS, Centers, Centers for Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid Services, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, developed the National Correct Coding Initiative, NCCI, uh, to promote national correct coding methodologies and to control improper uh, coding leading to in to inappropriate payments in Part B claims. Now, what is Medicare Part B? Part B helps cover medically necessary services like doctor's services and tests, outpatient care, home health services, durable medical equipment, and other medical services. Part B also covers some preventative services, okay? Now, these that I'm gonna read from you, read for you these, uh, some of these examples, these are from the general correct coding policies for NCCI policy manual for Medicare services, okay? Again, full of very valuable, enlightening information, okay? Uh, the CMS developed its coding policies based on coding conventions defined in the American Medical Association's CPT manual, uh, national and local policies and edits, coding guidelines developed by national societies, analysis of standard medical and surgical practices, and a review of current coding practices. Okay. So again, this is going to have to deal with the procedures side of the house, okay? If a procedure, and this is some of the examples that come directly from this manual, okay? Uh, if a procedure utilizing one approach fails and is converted to a procedure utilizing a different approach, only the completed procedure may be reported. For example, if a laparoscopic hysterectomy is converted to an open hysterectomy, only the open hysterectomy code may be reported. Now, if you're, let's stop right here, okay? If you're a brand new coder and you know this right out of the gate, again, light years ahead and it's gonna make things a lot easier for you to pick up, okay? Because the idea is when you are a coder that you can be plopped into any any clinic in whatever setting that you're coding, whether you're, you're coding outpatient or you're coding inpatient, you can be plopped into any clinic and within a couple of days, you should be able to pick it up, okay? Because knowing where to find information like this, okay? Um, and 
Again, cms.gov is a very valuable resource. I get questions all the time from people. Blue, where do I find information? cms.gov. Start there because they have the uh, Medicare Learning Network. And again, it is free. This is a free resource, okay? Take advantage and learn what you can, okay? Um, but knowing that right out of the gate, I'm just saying I'd be scared of you. This is stuff that I had to learn along the way, okay? <laughs> All right, the next one is, the next example that they have um, is since a myringotomy uh, requires access to the tympanic membrane through the external auditory canal, removal of impacted cerumen from the external auditory canal is not separately reportable. Now, again, we're going to stop right there. Now, think about it. Is there a code for removal of impacted cerumen? Yes, there is. But if you already know that because that is um, part of getting to the, the myringotomy, right? Uh, part of doing that procedure is the removal of the impacted cerumen. Again, you're light years ahead because you, you're already going to know that that's included in the procedure. Okay. Uh, the next one is... The global surgical package includes the administration of fluids and drugs during the operative procedure. CPT codes 96360 to 96377 shall not be reported separately for that operative procedure. Under the Outpatient Prospective Payment Services, OPPS, um, the administration of fluids and drugs during or for an operative procedure are included services and are not separately reportable. Okay, so that is something to keep in mind uh, when you do start to code uh, for surgeries, okay? That's very, very important to know. <laughs> and this is a very good place to start. Like I said, I can't, I can't get enough of this because this was really good. When I was reading it this morning, I was like, wow, this is really good stuff. Uh, and this is very, very valuable, especially for somebody that's brand new, okay? Um, and then another one in the notes that I took, uh, treatment of complications of primary surgical procedures is separately reportable with some limitations. And this is where it starts to get a little, uh, okay, so listen up. The global surgical package for an operative procedure includes all intraoperative, so whatever goes on during the surgery, right? Um, services that are normally a usual and necessary part of the procedure. Additionally, the global surgical package includes all medical and surgical services required of the surgeon during the post-operative period of the surgery to treat complications that do not require a return to the operating room. Thus, the treatment of a complication of a primary surgical procedure is not separately reportable. One, if it represents a usual and necessary care in the operating room during the procedure, or two, it occurs postoperatively and does not require a return to the operating room. For example, control of hemorrhage, is a usual and necessary component of a surgical procedure in the operating room and is not separately reportable. So sometimes you'll be reading in these notes that uh, there was a little bit of a hemorrhage and they had to use a bovi cautery to, to stop the hemorrhage. Um, that's, that may be one thing that they may do. Um, control of post-operative hemorrhage is also not separately reportable unless the patient must return, must be returned to the operating room for treatment, okay? In the latter case, the control of the hemorrhage may be reported separate, may be separately reportable with a modifier 78. So for example, if they had their tonsils taken out and they had to go back to the operating room because they needed to get control of the bleed, uh, which can sometimes happen, uh, then that would be some, a case where they would have to go back into the OR and, and that would be uh, where modifier 78 would come into play, okay? Um, some of the other things that I noticed on here, and these are coming directly from that manual. Uh, so, yes, we know you have a little bike. 
<laughs> uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, so since uh, another example is since a cardiac stress test includes multiple electrocardiograms, an electrocardiogram is not separately reportable on a cardiac stress test. Okay, so again, another example of having a procedure code for that. Um, but knowing that that is already included in that particular procedure or is it an inherent part of that other procedure, okay? Um, so really good stuff, right? Uh, a, com a component part is an acceptable standard of care when performing a comprehensive service. A component service is usually necessary to complete a comprehensive procedure. And then a component service is not a separately distinguishable procedure when performed with a comprehensive service. So this is some of the things that it does cover in this in this PDF, uh, which is really good. I'm telling you guys, don't don't miss out on this. Um, let's see. Uh, another example here says since a colectomy requires exposure of the colon, a lap the laparotomy and um, a hediolysis to expose the colon are not separately reportable because it's basically uh, opening up the area to get in. Again, thinking of the myringotomy uh, example with the removal of impacted cerumen, uh, that, is, that is something like that, that. That you can think of along the lines of if you have to remove that to get to, then it's probably already included, okay? Um, let's see what else since we have we got plenty of time. Um, <laughs> and I talked about that one. I only did one paper because sometimes I have a habit of <laughs> writing a bunch of stuff and not being able to get to everything. So I have I have the PDF up right now. Uh, let's see. If an endoscopic procedure is performed at the same patient encounter as a non-endoscopic procedure to ensure no interoperative injury occurred or to verify that the procedure was performed correctly, the endoscopic procedure is not separately reportable with a with the non-endoscopic procedure. Okay, so basically they're just the procedure to check it to make sure everything's okay is not separately reportable. Okay, because it would be considered a part of the procedure. Okay. So fascinating stuff. Yes. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I wanted to touch on was like, uh, let's see, where was it? If the lap, if a laparoscopic procedure fails and is converted to an open procedure, the physician shall not report the diagnostic laparoscopy in lieu of the failed laparoscopic procedure. Okay. Um, for example, if a laparoscopic cholecystectomy is converted to an open cholecystectomy, the physician shall not report the failed uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy nor a diagnostic laparoscopy. Because the thing is, it's already, it's, it's converted to open. So it's basically, we're just going to go ahead and put everything into this, this procedure now because it's, it's open. Uh, and this is another thing that I want you guys to pay attention to as well. When you start to do uh, surgery coding and say, for example, you're looking at the operative note and the title of the procedure says it is a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And you think, oh yeah, that's all I have to do. I see the title of the procedure right there and the note, there's a, there's a note here, but you're not reading it. And you think, oh yeah, I can get that. Let me go ahead and put the, the procedure in and boom, I got my code and I can move on to the next one. Oh no, no, my friend. No, no. You need to read that note because in case something like that happened, right? That they had to convert it to an open procedure. That's going to completely change that code. It's going to completely change the CPT code and you're going to get it wrong. If you, you just code based off of the title of the procedure and not really looking at the documentation, you have to make sure that the documentation marries up with what is being reported. Okay. If it doesn't, then you need to code appropriately, or you need to make sure that you're sending a query if, you, if something needs to be clarified. So again, 
this is where knowing all those little detail things is really going to come into play. Because I've seen coders where they say, oh, well, they get really kind of relaxed um, with their providers and they get relaxed in, in the fact that, oh, they can try to hurry up and get through these encounters and get through these surgeries without really looking at the details. Um, this is very important that you do get into good habits and get into good habits early. Don't start getting into quick corner cutting. It's going to take as long as it takes. And you know, uh, you, you can't rush quality. Okay. Uh, but once you start to get faster, you will start to get more momentum. The thing about it is when you are coding, especially when you're coding for anything, anything at all, you need to make sure that your distractions are to a minimum. This means putting your phone away. I have seen so many coders get caught up with their phones and half paying attention to their phone, half doing work and, and, and half paying attention to what they're doing. Guys, you're there to work, okay? Your phone can survive without you. We, we went without phones for years, okay? It really drives me crazy when I see people on their phones and then they, they complain that they can't keep up with their production. You can't keep up with your production because you're on your phone, which you should not be. Because this cheats not only the patient, but it cheats the provider out of your 100% undivided attention. You have to give 100% undivided attention at all times when you are doing this stuff. Because if you don't, you can miss out on something, okay? That provider could miss out on credit or that patient could miss out on having a crucial, vital diagnosis added to their, um, added to their diagnosis list, okay? Because you weren't paying attention if you were on your phone, okay? Or you were being distracted or you were allowing other people around you to talk and, and chit chat and things like that because they will try to do that too. And so sometimes you just have to be kind of firm and say, you know, guys, I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to this and, uh, you know, I just need to, to focus on this right now. So uh, if, you know, they're, they're mature, they'll understand, okay? Uh, it's, it's just all about how you approach things. Uh, you want to make sure that you're doing a good job, you know, and that's, that's number one. You want to make sure that you're being detailed and making sure that you read everything, uh, especially in the beginning while you're trying to learn is really huge. Okay. And knowing these NCCI, uh, details and things like that is really, really going to help you. Okay. And I, and I say it a lot because, um, all these things in here, I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, you got to know that. Yeah. You sure have to know that, you know? And these are things that are very valuable and they're going to help you. They're going to help you to navigate much more quickly because you're not going to sit here and waste your time going back and forth, uh, second guessing yourself. Do I pick this up? Do I not pick this up? You're going to know right away. And a lot of the emails that I get uh, from people asking about like surgeries and things like that, how do I know how to, how to decipher what, sur what procedures to pick up? Start by reading this. Start by reading this. Um, right by reading this pdf because that's going to help you get you pointed in the right direction when you know this is like your roadmap right this is your roadmap and this is going to help you to know what to pick up what to not to pick up because believe me in the beginning i was wondering do i pick up both do i put the discontinued procedure on one and do i do the other one on that one you see if i had known about this <laughs> i wouldn't have had that question so if you're studying, you get the benefit of knowing all of this stuff now. So good for you. <laughs> um, but yes, that's, that's, that's going to be it for right now. Um, but one of the other things too is to pay attention to um, like if a procedure is age specific, make sure that you are making sure that that, that marries up. Some, some procedures are age specific. I can't think of any off the top of my head for some reason. I'm just drawing a blank. But uh, there are age-specific ones. There are gender-specific procedures as well. Now, it is very important because, uh, like, a female cannot have a male um, male procedure, and a male procedure cannot have a female procedure. Uh, there are some things that are like uh, the urinary system. Okay, that's one of them, and you have to make sure that you're looking at the documentation and making sure that it matches. Okay, everything is is selected in in matching okay uh sometimes not everybody's going to use an encoder so they don't always have those 
ways to flag. Um, if you are using an encoder, it's not going to let you uh, put in, if the patient is a female, it's not going to let you put a male diagnosis in there. It won't even let it come up, okay? That's just how encoders are designed. But if you are still using the book, uh, that is something that you got to really, really pay attention to as well. So uh, that's just some of the things that this thing touches on. Um, as far as like, uh, you know, um, about the different uh, procedures as far as specific, for a specific group, that is one of the things that it, this does touch on. Uh, some of the modifiers, 59, it, it covers 59, uh, and it covers a lot of different ones. The XE, XS, XP, and XU, it, it also talks about those. Uh, this is a really, really good comprehensive paper, okay, so... But yes, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up, but wasn't this fun? <laughs> Only me, right? Only me, I would think this is fun. But anyway, uh, yes, take the time, take a Saturday, just read it, okay? Uh, and if you need to break it up and read it just a few pages at a time, that's fine. It, reading and studying is like exercise, okay? If you have to do a little bit at a time, it's fine, but be consistent with it, okay? As long as you're consistent with it, you will start to see results. Okay, so that's it for right now. But yes, I hope you'll tune in tomorrow because I think tomorrow is a sequencing video, I think, or Modifier 57, one of the two. Anyway, it's going to be a really good episode tomorrow as well. So <laughs> I'll go ahead and wrap this one up. But uh, if this video helps you, I hope you'll share it. Um, I hope you'll consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll leave that link down in the description box below. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, Somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.